back in the early 90s when I was teaching Teradata classes, the amps and parsing engines were hardware oriented. You can open a cabinet that was about the size of a refrigerator and there would be eight processors and you would go, oh, what are those? And they go, those are the amps. There's the Intel chips, there's the memory boards, there's the network, there's the disks. And what's this? Well, it doesn't have a disk, it's a parsing engine. This was complicated hardware and if you had 100 amps, you had to get about the size of a football field to store this. Then Teradata went from Teradata release or version one to Teradata version two, which was software for all amps and parsing engines. They put these inside a node about that big inside the memory. And that's why you'll see amps and parsing engines called VPROX, or virtual processors. Now, what's really interesting about this, of course, there's hardly any hardware, so nothing hardly ever breaks, but it's still the same. Each amp really has its own processor in its own mind. It's got its own memory, its own dedicated disk. It's a shared nothing architecture. As you can see here, inside our node is 40 amps and four parsing engines. Next to that in other portions of the memory is FSG cache, file system generating cache, and each amp is going to get its portion of file system generating cache that it and only it can access. That's what I want you to see and understand right now. When the department table was created, a table header went to every single amp. They all had that table. Then they distributed those rows and they had the rows that they own. As you can see, they stored that in a block. This amp has four rows in its data block. Out there on that amp's disk, on each amp's disk, is the wall log and the wall depot. I'm going to run you through a scenario and you're going to see it moving in and out of memory and exactly how it works. In this AMP, we have a row that's called human. It's actually the department human resources and management has come back and said, I don't like the name human as the department name. We're going to name that HR. So the update statement says, I want you to update that row and change that name to HR, not human. HR and now the wall depot of that amp and the wall log of that amp go ooh they're calling our name it's time for action in our next slide we're going to see exactly how they work together to get this update completed the first thing that the amp's going to do is bring that block into memory and then it's going to write department 100 human and it's going to write that back down to its disk in the wall log, it's got a before image of this row before it changes. This is called the undo log. Here you can see that we've still got on our disk the old block. We've moved it into FSG cache and we've already captured the row that's about to change in its before image. If anything now happens, we've got our undo log down there to make the change go back to the way it was. Now, in FSG cache, where everything always happens in memory, we're going to make the change from human to HR, and then we're going to take another picture of that row after that update, and we're going to also write that to the wall log. Now, we have the undo and the redo log. Now, Teradata is going to take the entire FSG cache block that's in memory and it's going to write it down to its disk in a different place called the wall depot. Now it's actually got two images of the change after it's happened so the block is identical and it's in two places. The last step is to then do the actual write back to disk once everything's perfect and this row now says 
HR, the transaction's complete. The AMP sends a message to the parsing engine over the binet, and then the wall log and the wall depot are cleaned. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. The next is Query Chameleon, a query tool looking to help your data adapt to any surroundings.